Welcome back. You found Fritz. Today's video represents the third part in the first installment of my creative series. So far in this cluster of videos, we've looked at the bass, the drums, and the vocals from the song To the Moon in a Hurricane, and today we're looking at the guitars, which are not in short supply for this song. The guitars cover everything from melody to straight-ahead rhythm to a sort of rock-style chord melody to more ethereal spaces and pads. And we will be covering all of that in this video, but first I'd like to ask that if you take away anything useful from these videos, then please give them a like and subscribe for more stuff. And as always, you can find the links to the products that I discuss in this video in the description below. Thanks a lot and let's get started. So usually we'd start with the signal chain that went into recording this aspect of the song. However, in the case of the guitars, the signal chain used isn't always very straightforward. For instance, sometimes a real amp is used to record with, and sometimes amp modeling provides a different result that is more suitable for the song being recorded. Also, sometimes guitar effects are used in the recorded signal as opposed to waiting to add them later during mix time. And sometimes different guitars are used for different parts of the song. And even the way that the guitar is played or even the pick that you choose to use differs from part to part. So let's look at each part individually and we'll break them down piece by piece. So the first thing that's heard when the song starts is a rhythm guitar, so we'll start there as well. This part was recorded with my inexpensive Slick SL60 guitar, which honestly is not very pleasant for me to play because I don't really like flat fretboards and smaller neck lengths. However, that's just my subjective view and big hands talking, and it might be perfect for somebody else. Although Slick guitars are inexpensive, they definitely aren't cheaply constructed, and they feel and play like something much more costly. I used it because the P90 pickups that this guitar has give it a nice chime and an alternative sound for my Strat. This part was recorded straight into my Vox AC4C1 1x10 inch 4 watt tube amp with the volume midway and the preamp gain breaking up just enough to give it a little bit of crunch. I used an Audix i5 to capture the amp, which is a cardioid dynamic microphone that I sometimes prefer over an SM57. Otherwise, the standard signal chain of the TG2, WA76, and Symphony combination is used with a 76 compressing about 8 to 10 decibels. On a rhythm guitar part like this one, I will usually use a little more compression on the way into the computer than I would if I were recording a voice or a bass. So this is an easier part made up of power chords, and for the beginners out there, a power chord is just a chord with two notes in it, which are the root and the fifth. The reason why I'm putting the word chord in quotes is because usually you would need to include a major or minor third in between the root and the fifth to signify whether or not this is a major or minor chord. But somewhere along the way, people just started to accept that these two notes do in fact make a chord. And these are pretty fun to play around with because you can slide them around easily and you can make some cool sounding parts that fit in well into a larger arrangement. So since these are just roots and fifths, as I said before in the previous video, you can use your voice or a different instrument to fill in those thirds or sixths or whatever you want to help convey which mood, be it major or minor, happy or sad, that you're going after. Going back to the intro of the song, the decidedly minimal lead guitar melody is made up of three different parts. One has a delay effect on it. One is played with an ebo that sometimes mirrors what the delayed part is playing and sometimes strays from it or harmonizes with it. And one part is a slide guitar that was doubled, meaning played twice, providing an equally sparse counter melody. I couldn't find an actual slide to play this last part with, so instead I used this old tube. So here they are laid out inside of Logic. And as you can see, I've actually bounced the two slide guitar parts together which I'll usually do for a simple doubled part like this one. And here's what they sound like all together. So one by one, here's the Ebo.
here is the delay guitar. And here's the slide guitar. I'll get into how to remove that noise in the background in the next video. And as you can see, this part comes back a few different times throughout the song, just so that it establishes itself as one of the main melodies. The signal chain for these guitars is similar to the part that we've already covered. The main difference being that my Strat and the Marshall JCM800 on its clean channel and the Sovtech cabinet are used for the delay part and the Ebo part. And the Vox pushed into distortion along with the slick guitar is used for the slide parts. All of these guitars had either no compression at all or just a little bit of it going into the computer. When the layered melody that these three parts make up is finished, the clean delayed guitar continues into the verses, which just plays a droning B major six chord, providing a background for the rest of the instruments. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to cover in this video is the chorus guitars. This section consists of two main guitar parts, one being the slightly overdriven part that was double tracked and then panned hard left and right. And this part reminded me of the Who while writing it. So that's how it's labeled in the project. Yeah, Who 1 and Who 2. And here's a little snippet of that. This part was actually recorded through the radial JDI direct box into the computer. The reason for this is that I didn't know exactly what sound I wanted to end up with during the writing process. So to be safe, I just recorded it direct and then I messed around with some reamping later on. But I'll cover reamping in a separate video because it's not really relevant here since in the end I ended up using an amp modeler. So after listening back to a few contenders, I ended up settling on this Overloud THU more specifically, it's BHS sold rig library, which, which gave this track the sound that it was looking for. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the setting that I ended up using is called Slow Watt Who. So it fits this guitar part perfectly. This other part down here is distorted and heavily affected with tremolo. This part is based off of triads, which are just three note chords, and it's used in the arrangement as if it were keys or a synth part, filling in the upper register of the guitar to bring more excitement to the chorus section. I used the Vox amp and the standard signal chain to get it done. And here's a little bit of what that sounds like. And here's what they both sound like together. So those parts are played pretty much the same in every chorus. And then in the outro of the song, the tremolo is actually sped up to double time and it sounds like this. So you have the first part playing lower on the fretboard. And then you have the second part filling out the upper frets. The goal for the two separate guitar parts in the chorus was to make as much contrast between the two of them as possible. Well, with that, we'll wrap up this video. I really hope that you've gotten something useful out of it. 
In the next and final video of this debut series, we'll dive into the mix process of the song. But before then, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more stuff. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.